This is a magnificent team that helped me gain a lot of elo in no time at all and of course we're gonna check out Giratina on origin form at the back and Polion with Toxapex. If you want to replace Giratina with something else because this is a Pokemon that not everyone is having, well Kofagrigus might actually be for you. Kofagrigus and Giratina serve so many things in common and sometimes Kofagrigus can be even better. Not Runerigus, I mean Kofagrigus, right? Do not mess this up. So anyways now with Empolio now coming into the game we get the chance to uh, have a very nice battle against Gudra by resisting those Drunk Breaths and in the process we got both of them shields out of the way. Now with our Toxapex coming into the match we can easily one shot down, uh, almost one shot down that Victory Bell and we also catch the move on our Giratina. I really like this team, I really recommend to you trainers able to completely farm down here with the Shadow Claws and now Gudra returns. It doesn't matter how much energy it has, we still have two shields to flex here and we're just gonna complete the farm down. With Kudra now out of the way, they come back into the battle with their final Pokemon and that is Typhlosion. Absolutely awesome news for us, but still the battle is not over yet. I lag a little bit here so I lost one poison jab which can be crucial at this point of the battle but hopefully we can still reach to the next brine before they get to the, to the thunder punch and that is gonna be an awesome victory to begin of today's content. Into the next battle now everyone with the Swambert up in front, Giratina is gonna do so much work on that Pokemon and now we're having the upper hand with the Shadow Ball. At some point you always want to switch out on your Empoleon and of course here uh, this Mad Boy is gonna get to the Earthquake. However on this incident you do not want to switch out immediately because they already have the ground type up in front and that's the main asset of Empoleon on having it as a safe switch. It can apply so much pressure to those ground types even though it is weak to them and most probably you're gonna provoke them so that your Toxapex will most likely have nothing to fear in the end game. This is absolutely awesome. Now I can skip no I'm kind of light a kind of light in using my remaining energy but hopefully they have to do the same so down I go to the standard punch. Now by returning into the game with Giratina we can easily farm down and of course by having only a bomb of snow at the very end as soon as we get to the Shadow Ball, all we have to do is to switch out on Toxapex, survive pretty much whatever they throw and that's gonna be a fantastic game for us. Look at Energy Ball though, uh, they managed to get a debuff on our end, I was kinda uh, on uh, the track to take the move just for the flex but after the debuff I was not sure and we end up farming down anyway so there goes that. Into the next one now trainers with a frostless up in front, not the best lead that you can get but still kinda playable. Uh, on the CMP I'm gonna go for the ominous wind, hopefully we can grab a shield out of them and in the process we might actually catch a move on our Empoleon. So let's see how this is gonna go as my opponent lets the move go through. Dragoner now comes into the game and this is kind of a core breaker for our team but uh, to be honest you can always play around it because of how glassy it can be and by resisting those Drango Breaths with your Empoleon. So Empoleon now getting the move on the Dragonair, down they go, they want to rely completely on Polyrath but before we go down we still have one more drill pack to go. So down goes their shield, now we are both even on those shields but as soon as they see Toxapex they get completely walled down and we're gonna get a fairly uh, good victory. Into the next battle now everyone with a Quagsire on Shadow Mode up in front. This Pokemon can always be manageable by our team but first we need to go for those Shadow Balls. Uh, you can see here that they take the move and after blocking the, the Stone Edge we manage to complete the farm down with our Shadow Claws. But first we need to survive the move and it ends up being just the Aqua Tail. Down goes Quagsire, absolutely awesome for us. Now they got Mantin coming into the game and this is kind of a big nightmare for our Kiratina. Hopefully though after the Shadow Ball we can switch out and now they come into the battle with Gligar. This is why I enjoy using Pokemon uh, like Empoleon which can draw out the ground type effectively, still get a shield out of the opponent so, my, so that my uh, Toxapex can easily emerge on the end game as a pure closer. So over here now we are kinda obliged in uh, going for the shield because we want to take that final shield of their own out of the game so the battle is definitely 
definitely not over yet. Omnus Wind now is gonna be blocked, which is not that great, but still we want to have the upper hand with Toxapex. So I'm just gonna bring it into the game. They immediately switch out on Mantin. This is horrible for them. Uh, perhaps they were expecting a different approach from my team, but it is what it is, and now we're gonna take completely advantage of it. I uh, don't care how much damage those aerial aces are gonna do, they're never gonna put us at a critical position, and all we need to do here is to completely farm down with our poison jabs. Down goes Mantin, now with uh, Gligar being severely hurt, we can easily grab this victory and get the video going with a metal trash can up in front for the next one. So red is still whatever it throws here is gonna be resisted, so obviously this is gonna be looking like a solid battle for us, especially when Shadow Ball can connect for about half of their total HP. This is how strong uh, our Pokemon can be, but at the same time, Kofa Grigus can still pull off the victory over Red Steel, so do not worry about that. Giratina can easily be replaced by that Pokemon. Uh, now, with shielding the Zap Cannon, you can see here that uh, the shield field is even, and I'm gonna get my hands on the Shadow Ball to secure the knockout over Red Steel. If they go for the block, perhaps I need to block as well, but at this point, I was thinking that they have the correct amount of energy for me to return into the battle with my Empoleon, get all that energy on my back and see how they respond. So they come back into the battle now with Serpeter, which is absolutely awesome. We can easily go ahead with the Drill Pack for some pretty nice, super effective damage. And by catching the move here on Toxapex, we can outplay our opponent by a lot. So now they have Carbing at the very end. All we need to do is to get to a couple of Brines and pressure them on uh, throwing the remaining energy that they have farmed up, so in the process we're gonna be looking absolutely awesome. Whatever they throw here is gonna be taken with this, while we can still reach to another brine, uh, so I guess that this is the perfect opportunity for me to get my hands on the Sludge Wave. I was hoping for the instant knockout, but it doesn't matter because Empoleon can guarantee that by surviving the move as well. Now with Sir Peter returning and me having one shield while they have zero, one drill pack later we can get this victory with our Triton. Uh, so here comes now a Vansul up in front which is not the best, not the worst because of how good they can be with the debuffs and of course how glassy we are against their moves but at the same time you can see that we can survive with this so at some point they are definitely switching out. So here comes now Greedent and I'm expecting another normal type if I want to be fair with you uh, because this is kind of common sense for this team. Anyways now with our Empoleon having access to Hydro Cannon, I don't care what move they're gonna throw, we can still do so much damage and work over that Gridant. However, the Trailblaze will do more damage than I was expecting and uh, right here I decide to go for the Ominous Wind just to uh, go for the Knockout, but my opponent can still survive because of how weak Ghost moves can be over normal types. Down they go to my side close, and now Galvanzola returns into the game. Hopefully here we can survive those vault switches while I can reach to back to back ominous winds. My opponent here can still get though to another charge attack before I get my hands on the Ominous, Polyrath now at the very end and the battle is definitely not over yet. Now with my Bryans I want to do some cheap damage here and they decide to take it and you might be thinking Ganeto you have this victory uh, under your sleeve, this is gonna be an easy one right? Well yes again because after the debuffs we are not gonna be looking that strong and also I decide to take the first move which was kind of a big mistake as it seems. Now with my poison jabs I want to drop them at a very low point but they still have Galvanzola around which means that the vault switches are coming up. Two of those was re were registered as damage so that is gonna be extremely close and we get the victory because of our decent IVs. Into the next game now with Toxic Rock up in front, this is a crucial battle once again because they can easily get to the sad ball for the one shot so we need to be extra careful. As they're taking the Ominous Wind, I was thinking at this point that perhaps we can farm down if we block the sad ball, but instead they get to Mad Bomb. Hopefully though, we can still farm down before they reach to a sad ball, so that was kinda scary. And now with Hypno coming into the game, we got access to Shadow Ball to one shot down this Pokemon. 
However, my opponent is gonna block, which makes a ton of sense. And I was trying to catch here something like a nice punch or a shadow ball on my Toxapex, but uh, yeah, I end up walling down myself in a very awkward position. So another move is coming off, hopefully we can survive this, and of course, uh, do not do the same mistakes that I did, you should have stayed into the battle with your Giratina and grab the second shield out of play with this. Anyways, it is what it is, Gliscor now comes into the game and on shadow mode. Hopefully Giratina here can take the CMP, I'm not sure about Kofa Grigus, if if it is able to win CMPs against the Gligar family, uh, but uh, you have to test out, and if it does, well, it's all up to you to win any battle at all. Uh, so, attack rose sharply on that uh, Shadow Clash score. This is scary, but hopefully, we can still outspeed even though they got to that bait with the Night Slash. So, down they go, and yeah, this is gonna be an awesome one for us. Into the next game now with the Typhlosion up in front. However, uh, even when resisted, Typhlosion is gonna do so much damage with its moves. We have seen we have seen in previous videos that this Pokemon with Blast Burns can destroy down those Dragon types, so I can only imagine of how much damage they can do here. Anyways, now with the Blast Burn we can still survive and what I want to do at this point is to survive the following moves so that I can take Typhlosion out of the way with my Giratina. So in the process we get our hands on the Ominous Wind, down they go, we get the boost but it makes no difference at all because they still have a Charmer at the back and of course every Charmer is gonna have a Shadow Victory Belt because why not, toxic teams are fun and now they're gonna get to their charge attack. I realize here that perhaps Toxapex is gonna be a much more severe threat to their team especially with the Razor Leafer and the Charmer so Toxapex here is just gonna destroy them down with its moves and absolutely get a huge victory for us against a very toxic team. Into the final one out trainers with a Mantin up in front, not the best lead ever, especially when they can carry a move like Ice Beam. So I'm not sure if we can win the CMP here, I'm hoping to, uh, but uh, till then I will not risk it a lot. And since they are over farming a bunch of energy, I decide at some point to switch out on my Empoleon since it was feeling like a necessary and easy catch on my Pokemon. So they still have some energy left on that Mantin, and now with Serpiro coming into the game, we managed to get a shield out of play. This is absolutely awesome, now my Giratina will emerge into the battle and I will try to have Toxapex over that Mantin for the very end game. So whatever they do here is gonna be resisted with those Fresi plants while Aerial Ace cannot finish us off on time. Anyways now, with my Shadow Ball we managed to finally guarantee the knockout, Dragonite comes into the game and all of a sudden we have a crazy win condition. Now Toxapex can easily come into the game, they have zero shields remaining and if we can block correctly here those Dragon Claws, we're gonna be on a very good spot with our poster jabs both against Mantin and Shadow Dragonite. Mantin now, whatever it throws can be taken with this while we can always charge up to that Sludge Wave for the one shot over Dragonite. And as it seems, our plan is executed correctly and here is a nook over Dragonite, let's get the trainer absolutely awesome and that will conclude this video with an amazing victory i was about to say loss but it is a victory anyways that is gonna be all for today thank you for watching for sticking around till the end it really means a lot for my channel before you go leave a huge like subscribe to my content and i hope to see you all into the next one